Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have a new bee-themed coffee bar for you. All kinds of fun spring DIYs using items from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started. The first DIY we're gonna do, I always like to do a big coffee bar sign at the top of my coffee bar. And this is the one I had for my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. And we're just gonna reuse it. I've reused it a million times. It's just a thrift flip sign, just a pallet board sign, but it's a perfect size for the top of my coffee bar. So I'm just gonna remove the shamrock. I didn't cause too much damage. I only had to use a little bit of hot glue here at the bottom. So I'm just trying to remove that and any like kind of sticky residue. I did a hand painted sign for St. Patrick's Day. Now today I kind of want to give myself a blank canvas. So I'm just using white acrylic paint and we're gonna go over everything to try to cover up that like painting that we had on there and all of that bright green. What I wanna do is I didn't really want like a bright yellow sign for like bee theme or a black sign. So I thought we could try to do like a faux wood grain on this to kind of do a wood theme for this. I think that's gonna kinda go with my vibe. I have like a removable wallpaper on the wall behind my coffee bar that looks like white shiplap. And so I think it'll go nicely with it cause my shelves on my coffee bar are also made out of wood. So just giving that plain white canvas, that meant I had to repaint the sides white as well. Whenever you like hand paint on here, you know, you're gonna have a little bit more paint in those areas, like where the words are. They're a little bit raised still. So I'm gonna try to mask that, cover that up as much as I can. And you guys that have watched my channel for a long time know how many times I've remade the sign, probably like 10, 15 times at this point. <laughs> I've got my money's worth from Goodwill. So I'm just taking Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and going all over in one direction to give myself that faux wood grain. Now, as you can see, when I did that on the top board, you can see the writing, the shamrock, like the raised paint from when I hand painted that. So it's gonna need a little bit more attention up there, but otherwise I'm kind of going all over kind of giving that faux wood grain. I love to do that. It's such an easy way to get that wood effect. To cover this, I'm just gonna go over it with some more white acrylic over both words. And then I can go back in and distress more with my Antique Wax by Waverly until I can kind of mask that a little bit where um, I won't be able to read that in the final product. I'm not gonna hand paint it today. I'm gonna show you a different technique that's gonna make a really easy um, temporary sign. So I love hand painted signs, but sometimes I like to try some different techniques, give you guys some ideas of what you can do, even if you don't have a Cricut, um, cause I don't use a Cricut at all for this one today. Now, this is what we're gonna put on the front of the sign. I got this at the Dollar Tree in the spring section. A little craft bee, it's a little honey comb with a little wood bead on it. And it's the perfect size for this um, coffee bar sign. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the honey comb like yellow. This is bright yellow acrylic paint. And I'm just using a makeup sponge. We're gonna go all over that bottom piece of it just the honeycomb with the yellow. And then I'm gonna do the little honeybee in a different color. Now I didn't really wanna do a lot of bright yellows and blacks. And so I thought, you know, I did the honeycomb yellow, the sign's gonna be like a wood grain, right? So I thought I would just do the bee in like white in just one color. I'm not gonna do any details or anything on that. I just kinda want it to look a little bit abstract. So again, just using a makeup sponge, I am going to carefully paint that white, trying not to get any paint on the sign below it. I did get a little bit on there, but 
no big deal. I can just go back in and touch that back up with some yellow. So here's our sign. As you can see, you can still slightly see the lettering on the top, but I think that we can mask it with our current letters. So I'm gonna put the honeycomb over on the left side of our copy bar sign. And this is that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree, the white board. And I am just cutting one board of it off. It's just the right height to do lettering. So I thought this would be a really fun idea to try to do my own lettering with this removable wallpaper and then I can just peel it off when I'm ready to switch this out. So I'm just gonna use my ruler to kind of help me um, kind of figure out some straight lines here for the letters. What I wanted to say is coffee buzz. I thought that would be really cute because my coffee bar is where I always come to get my coffee buzz and it's gonna go with my bee theme. So I thought that would be fun. So I'm just trying to do like a boxy C something that's gonna be easy to cut out. So kind of use my ruler on that one to kind of give myself a good start. And I kind of started a little bit further down the, the, the log um, to avoid like the nail holes that were on there on the little wood slat. And so I'm gonna kind of do that boxy kind of effect on all the letters. So the first line we're gonna do coffee. So I'm gonna use that C to kind of measure how big I need my rectangle to be um, to be able to make an O. And all these letters were pretty easy to make in this like boxy fashion. Um, and so when I get the O, I just do a rectangle. I fold it in half and then I cut a little rectangle in the middle and that turned out perfectly. I, I was able to cut them all out pretty easily except for um, the bee and buzz and I'll show you how I ended up doing that. So I cut the same size square for F and I'm gonna need two of those. And I'm also going to need two E's and I want them all to be the same size. So just using that one little rectangle as a reference, stacking two on top of each other, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the bottom of an F. That way I'm, my letters are going to be um, the same since I'm cutting them out together and it's gonna make it look more consistent. The F is so similar to an E that I'm gonna use that for reference to get my E started. But then changing it to an E and then I can use that E as a reference for my uh, second E. So the top row there is gonna say coffee. And this turned out really well. I wasn't sure if this would work. I guess you could always cut this with your Cricut as well. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you an option that you could use in case you didn't have a Cricut. So we're gonna spell out coffee. I like to like put words on the top two boards of my coffee bar sign because I usually have things sitting in front and I, you won't be able to read it. So since it's peel and stick wallpaper, we're just gonna simply peel off the backing on this and just kind of sit them all on there. I think it turned out really good. I was really impressed without using any kind of a cutting machine. And I wasn't sure how well I would be able to paint on top of that antique wax by Waverly. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out another board for the buzzword, just by cutting out another strip and kind of measuring how big I want those rectangles to be. We're gonna go ahead and cut out four of those for buzz. Now the B was the only one that I kind of curved a little bit on the edges because I didn't want it to look like an eight. So I do curve it um, on the top and bottom on the right side. Then I wasn't sure how I was gonna cut the B shape out. So I kind of had to cut it and then I'm gonna have to kind of piece it back together there, but that's fine. And then the U is super easy. And then the Z, I just cut both of them out at once. Just a nice boxy Z. And there we have it. We have all of our letters for this cutout and they're just the right size. So this is an idea if you wanna do lettering on a sign and um, you don't wanna use Dollar Tree stickers or something like that, you can totally make your own. So I was really impressed with how that turned out. I will definitely have to use this technique again in the future. So we have our coffee buzz. And even though I cut that, I can kind of line that right back up and you can't even tell. 
I went back and forth about what kind of expression I was going to put on here, but I kind of wanted a B word. So I, I love that I went with coffee buzz. Now to seal that down a little bit, I'm going to use um, just some matte Mod Podge just to help it stay down. It's not going to make it stick permanently or anything though. And then we can go ahead and use hot glue to glue down our honeycomb. I had so much fun putting these honeybee DIYs together. I had done a bee tear tray my first year on YouTube, so two years ago. And um, it's like my best video I've ever done. So I was tickled to try to do some bee DIYs again using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I do go over it with a little bit more Mod Podge just because I was kind of worried that some of the letters weren't going to stay down. They totally do, though. So that's the finished product. We're going to go hang that at the top of my coffee bar. And now we can start making everything for the shelves. If you don't have a coffee bar, these things would be great for a tear tray or any kind of decor as well. So this is my first find, a little Be Kind stepping stone from the Dollar Tree. It's so cute. I just want to make it stand up. So I'm just going to use a wood block from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and glue that to the back to make a little stand. I got two of these. The other one has a little girl gnome, um, bee gnome on it, and it's really cute as well. I really only had room for one on here, but it's kind of a fun idea to use the little stepping stones on a coffee bar or for decor because it's so cute. I didn't have to paint it or anything. The colors are perfect and it looks so nice and rustic with like the concrete. So I think that's going to make it stand up just fine. And there's a little bee. It says be kind. And it's super cute. So this is going to go on the top shelf. Now, this is not Dollar Tree, but this was a clearance find at my Publix grocery store. They had Ray done, and I couldn't believe it because they didn't sell well, so they put them all on clearance. So I got this great little honey pot. Isn't it so cute? It's got a little bee on top. It's got like a little honey dipper. Is that what they're called? So I'm just going to turn that around so you can see it. Look how cute that is. And it totally goes with my Ray Dunn mugs that I have on my coffee bar. And it was regularly $12.99. I think I got it like 75% off or something like that. So this is my little bargain honey pot and I love it. And so I had to use it on my tear tray. Okay, our next DIY, this is just a coffee creamer from the Dollar Tree. I always love to pick these up, especially the plain white ones, because you can customize them in any way. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one of these little wall decals from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to cut the little bee off the top. I just needed something tiny for the creamer. And I love to use creamers and stuff like that if I can, since it is a coffee bar, it kind of goes with a the theme. These are actually just stickers, not decals. So... It just sticks right on there. Look at that. Just a perfect, easy little DIY. And what we're going to fill the little coffee creamer with is I actually got this at Michael's. I know I never shop at Michael's, but I was there for some reason. I don't even remember why. And this was the only thing I bought. It was on sale like, you know, 50% off. But look at these little bees. They are like wrapped with string and they have little flowers. And I thought they would be perfect for this. And so... I kind of splurged on this one, but look how cute they look in that little Dollar Tree coffee creamer. So we're going to put that on the top shelf as well. Okay, next find. Look at this. I got two of these from the Dollar Tree. I'm only going to use one on the coffee bar, but it's a little bee sign. They're so cute. It says be humble and it's like a little slatted wood board and no glitter or anything. It is just perfect for this. And they kind of had them in the spring and garden section at my store. Okay, our next DIY, I picked up this adorable little canvas from the Dollar Tree. It says, let it be, and it has little honeycombs all over it. I also got one of these wood signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make this unframed canvas into a framed print. I always think that makes it look more professional. Um, and, you know, not quite as plain as just the canvas like that. And I didn't really have anything to make a frame for it. So we're going to kind of just take this apart like you were going to like reverse canvas it or something like that. Basically, I just take the hanger off, which I'm going to reuse for this project. Then I'm going to take a razor blade and just go around all four edges, cutting the canvas loose from the existing mount. And then we can put that inside 
against the wood on the back of that Dollar Tree sign and the frame will go around the edges. And these little signs from the Dollar Tree are the perfect size to do this. As you can see, it's almost a perfect fit for like the folded part, like the actual front of the canvas. So I'm just gonna cut along that fold line and I'm gonna kind of go one side at a time because I wanna make sure that I don't cut it too small. I don't really want any of the wood to be shown along the side. So I'm kind of just cutting one side at a time, kind of measuring it. And it was pretty much a perfect fit if I just cut on the fold lines. Once I get it all trimmed to size, we can just attach that. I'm going to use um, some matte Mod Podge. And since it is kind of a heavy canvas, I'm gonna have to go a little bit heavy with the Mod Podge. So I just put a nice thick coat on here and then we can just lay that canvas down. I can always clean up any of the excess Mod Podge if I get too much. So I'm just kind of using a baby wipe and kind of cleaning up anything that oozes out, but I definitely wanted it to be well glued down and stick to our sign. And that wood on the frame is not like the best wood, but I think it does make it look a little bit better than the unframed canvas. So if you find this little canvas at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick it up. Mine was just in like the home decor aisle with everything else. Now I want to repair the frame a little bit. I find that these fall apart sometimes, so I'm just going to reinforce it with my staple gun to make sure that the frame is going to stay together. Now I wanted to add some little bee details to this and I picked these cute little Craftwood 3D bees up at the Dollar Tree in their like spring and garden section and they are adorable. They're just the right size and they have little double sided tape on them already. So all you have to do is peel off the back and you can just start sticking the little bees to the honeycomb. So I thought these were just the right size for the shape of like the honey cones. And so I'm just gonna kind of start scattering them um, all over this side, kind of in a random fashion. And I've never crafted with these before, but I think I picked up the ladybug ones as well. They're so cute for a spring DIY. I'm also going to put a couple on the frame just to kind of make it look like some have landed on the frame as well. And a little bit here, like in the white space as well. The little canvas says, let it be. So we have like a fun little a bee saying, and we have bees and honeycomb. So this is gonna go perfectly. I'm gonna hang this on the wall um, of my coffee bar. So I don't really have room for this big hanger. Um, I do have the holes already in there though. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it tight like that. Kind of use the twine as decor by tying off the back. And then I'm gonna replace the hanger because I just don't have very much room between the shelves on my coffee bar. So I'm gonna use that existing sawtooth hanger that we took off the canvas. I love those and I always save them if I take them off because they're so easy to apply. You just have to hammer them on. There's no little screws or anything like that that you're trying to screw on. So there's our little let it be sign. And this is gonna go on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar and we can get started on our next DIY. I wanted to make like a honey jar, like a jar of honey. I thought that'd be really cute. And I do have one of these jar signs left over. Mine is just from, I think Thanksgiving or fall. Um, you can use any of those. They have them for any season if you have one. And then I picked up this great wall art from the Dollar Tree. I did not like the cheap frame. Like it is like literally broken and everything. It has glass on it. So I thought we could cover our honey jar with this cute little bee artwork. So um, if you're in your home decor aisle and you want to de decorate with bees, be sure to keep on the lookout because they have just so many cute finds this year. So we're gonna go ahead and take the frame off. See how the frame is even broken? Not a fan of that. Um, and the glass, and I just want the artwork. It says, don't worry, be happy. It's like simple white and black with like a yellow bee on there. And it's almost the perfect size to cover our jar. And it kind of goes with that white wood pattern that's already on the jar. So I'm just gonna kind of measure out where I need to cut it down just by flipping it over and kind of drawing on it where the jar would go. 
And as you can see, it's almost a perfect fit for the jar. So I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut the paper down. And this was just a quick, easy way to take this jar sign and personalize it and make it perfect for a bee theme. So I'm just going to kind of cut off a couple corners that I was afraid might stick out just a tiny bit. And then we can go ahead and start securing this down. Um, the leaves do kind of show on each side, but I'm gonna use something to kind of frame it out and it will cover that up. So I am just gonna use a Mod Podge on there and we are going to stick it down. Now be careful, I think I may have used too much Mod Podge on this because I did get a little bit of wrinkling, so I did have to kind of work to try to get this smooth. I'm just using my brayer for my Cricut to try to roll that down and try to get out any air I probably would have been better if I did with a Mod Podge on the jar and not on the artwork, but we got it on there one way or another. Now to seal it on there and make sure it stays stuck, we are also going to Mod Podge over the top of it. And I always use the matte Mod Podge because I don't like the gloss or the sheen of any of the shinier ones. So I give that a good dry, just trying to make sure I have as much of the wrinkles out as I can. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. And I do go over it with one more coat of Mod Podge, just to kind of even it out a little bit. Kind of level it down. We're gonna leave the burlap on the top of the jar because that's perfect. But I thought I could use some of this a decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, the brown rope. This is the skinny thin kind. And I thought we could just border this out. It's gonna kind of go with my color scheme. And it's gonna look nice with that burlap lid and it's gonna cover up the leaves that you can see along the sides that my artwork was not able to cover. So we're just gonna border that out just by putting hot glue all along the edges and putting the rope down. I'm, this is gonna be kind of a tall sign. I just have enough room for this on my um, bottom shelf of my coffee bar. And I'm not gonna do a stand or anything on this. I'm just gonna kind of lean this one up against the wall. I think it's gonna be perfect. I cut it once I get to the top of the jar here. I didn't really like that the jar now was kind of set back from that rope that was sticking out for the outline. So I do go back and um, frame out the jar lid as well. But I thought this turned out to be just a really cute little jar of honey DIY. I like to do anything that I could, I was trying to think of anything I could do that would kind of go with the bee theme and with like a honey theme. So just simply doing an oval to circle out that jar lid. And that really did kind of make it mesh a little bit better with what I did along the sides. And I'm not gonna do anything else to that. I think it's perfect. I thought about adding some ribbon or something like that, but I kind of like just the simplicity of it. So here's our little don't worry, be happy jar made with Dollar Tree supplies. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I have it linked below. I would love it if you would come join us. I also have a Facebook page I'm pretty active on. Also Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I am Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. And I would love to see you over there. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna make a bee skep. I picked up one of these little foam pieces from the Dollar Tree. I thought it would be the perfect base to get us started for a little skep for our coffee bar. So I'm going to use that same decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, the thinner brown rope. And it ended up taking like one and a half packages to make the size skep that um, I am going to make today. And I do have experience making these because I did make one of these for my bee tear tray two years ago. Um, I used a metal bucket with that one, but I like this method a little bit better. Now, I know that hot glue likes to um, melt like the styrofoam, but I'm just gonna work quickly with this. So I didn't really worry about it too much. I am just going to go ahead and do a bead of hot glue along the bottom and just making that kind of flush with the bottom of the scab. Then I'm going to keep gluing that around. I wanna add glue to the foam um, and to the rope below it. That way I, you can't see the green foam through the different pieces of rope. And also I want it to stay close and tight to that foam shape to kind of give me that like cone shape 
that a B scap has. I remember researching these when I did the tear tray. And so I think I'm pretty familiar with kind of how they look. Now, when you run out of foam, what you're going to do is just hot glue it to the rope below it. And I'm kind of moving in a little bit each time I do it to kind of make it a little bit skinnier. And I'm going to keep doing that until I taper it off the top. It's going to kind of give me like a dome shape for this little bee scap. And one package of rope is just not gonna be enough for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this package. Again, every time I'm gluing it on the one below it and I go a little bit more towards the inside, making the, the circle a little skinnier. So I did have a scrap piece of this that's gonna be perfect to finish this off. I can just make where I start and stop um, in the back but I do need like a little loop for the top of my skep. So I just cut a piece of rope off now. I'm gonna kind of glue it in there, but I'm gonna probably wiggle that around a little bit. But that's what we have so far for a little bee skep. And we're gonna start right where we left off here and just keep gluing that rope all the way around until it fills up that entire circle, kind of encasing that little loop in the top, which is kind of like, a little like loop thing that you can use to pick the skep up or like a hanger of some kind. I think it's to pick them, to pick them up. And just gluing it tighter and tighter. And then once I get it pretty good and filled in, I can just cut my rope down to size and just finish gluing that down. The shape kept pretty well, even though I didn't have anything inside of it for like the top part. I did a pretty good job of gluing them together. So the shape is pretty good. I do wanna clean it up a little bit now though. So I'm gonna use my heat gun to try to like melt like any hot glue that I have that might be visible since I did use a lot of hot glue on the rope. I also wanna burn off all of the fuzzy. So I'm just gonna go in with like a long lighter and just kind of burn off any imperfections that I see that are kind of sticking out. It's just gonna clean it up. I always like to do that when I work with a rope project. I think that it just makes them look nicer. So that looks pretty good. Now, the only thing um, I need to do on this still is to make like a little opening, a little hole in the front of the skep. And those are usually black. I'm just kind of working on my shape right there. I'm pretty happy with it. Now I was thinking if I wanted to attach like a black fabric circle or something to the front, but I thought, you know, rope paints pretty well. So I'm just gonna use black acrylic paint. I think that's gonna be the easiest method to do this. So I'm just gonna take a tiny brush from the Dollar Tree and some black acrylic paint. And right in the middle, we're just gonna kind of start painting a circle. And don't worry if it's not perfect, you can just make your circle a little bit bigger if you need to until it like looks really good for you. So I kind of add to mine to kind of make it look a little bit more symmetrical. And it actually turned out to be just about the right size. And I'm really glad I did that method. I think that worked better than what I did before. Now I thought it'd be cute to add a few more details and I do have a few of those little wooden bees left over from the Dollar Tree. I didn't think the sticker would stick too well to the rope though. So I'm just gonna use hot glue and gluing those kind of coming in and out of the little bee scab. And that's how it turned out. I think this is gonna be perfect on the bottom shelf of my bee coffee bar. What do you think about that one? Okay, next DIY, I picked up one of these great little honeycomb plaques from the Dollar Tree and some honeycomb fabric from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. They had two different kinds of this. This is kind of like an orange honeycomb. The other one was kind of a brighter yellow, but either one will work. I actually picked up both. Now I wanted to use two of those little honeycomb um, frames together, but I just didn't have enough room left on my coffee bar. So we're just gonna do one. I'm just putting the fabric upside down in the frame and kind of drawing the little octagon, um, or I guess it's a hexagon shape. 
um, on the fabric to kind of give myself a little bit of a pattern. I like the black frame, but I want to cover up the artwork that's on there and make it look like a honeycomb. So once I get that on there, I just cut that down to size. What I found out is that it was way too small. So that kind of worked to give me a reference point piece, but it was way too small. You could totally see the edges around it by doing that technique. So what I'm going to do is use that as a template on my honeycomb fabric. And I'm just going to go out like maybe an eighth of an inch on all sides and draw that back onto the back of the fabric to make a little bit bigger shape for my honeycomb. And that got really, really close. So what I'm going to do is fold this in thirds. That way I can go ahead and cut all three of these out at the same time. And hopefully they will all be the same size of the little frames there. They have these, they say like all different kinds of things because my other honeycomb sign said something different, but they're perfect for a bee theme, especially if you cover them up with this honeycomb fabric. Isn't that cute? You could also do that with scrapbook paper if you had it. I only usually shop at Dollar Tree, so I usually don't have any scrapbook paper because they usually don't have anything. But you can always DIY with this Dollar Tree fabric. It turns out great. So just putting Mod Podge down, I did a rather thick layer of Mod Podge because I am attaching that fabric and I want it to stay down inside of the little black frame. And just using a baby wipe to kind of clean up any Mod Podge that kind of seeps out. And actually I can kind of put that on the top as well. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other two little honeycombs. And um, I'm gonna also attach that bee to this to kind of make it like a bigger piece. And that little bee that you see there is just a bee yard stake that I got at the Dollar Tree as well. I'm also gonna go over the top of the fabric with that Mod Podge just to make sure that it is gonna stay down and stay glued. And as you can see, it's pretty close fit. You can kind of see the white background behind it. And towards the end, I do touch that up with just a little bit of yellow paint to kind of make it look better. But for now, I just wanna make sure that I get all that Mod Podge dry and then we can start decorating this. The honeybee is kind of perfect, but it kind of needs a few things. The wings are very like rainbow colored, which doesn't really go with the colors on my coffee bar. So I do want to tone those down. I start with a little of that bright yellow acrylic and kind of distressing the wings with that. That did help tone down the rainbow color, but I found that you could still kind of see that through it once I do do the paint that yellow. So we're going to add another color to this to kind of um, tone it down some more. But I'm going to go ahead and do yellow on the other little bee wing as well. And he is so cute. I'm going to have it look like he's kind of flying away from the honeycomb from the beehive. And so I have a little bit of acrylic metallic silver. I thought that might look good for a wing to kind of make it look iridescent and kind of pick up that great texture that was already on the metal B. So I distress all over with some of that silver over the yellow and the combination turned out really nice. Kind of a translucent um, yellowish gold wing for our little bee. I'm going to kind of attach it to the back of the frame, I think, like that with the yardstick that's on there. Um, so I do want to not take all of it off. I want to actually bend the yard stake and use part of it. So that kind of makes it a little bit harder. Um, I do use some pliers and kind of bend it back and forth until I can get it weak enough to make it pop and snap. It's kind of easier if you're taking the entire stake off the back, I have found. But I just wanted a shorter stake and I was able to get it to break off. Now, the only thing I don't like about the bee at this point is it's a little glossy um, for all the DIYs I'm doing today. I'm doing much more of a matte finish, kind of a farmhouse vibe to these DIYs. So I am going to go over the bee with some matte Mod Podge as well, just to tone them down a little bit. And this project kind of evolved. I kind of knew what I wanted to do with it, but I kind of keep adding to it and it gets cuter and cuter. <laughs> 
So I got a pretty good coat all over on this guy and then I'm just gonna give him a quick dry and then we can work on attaching him to our honeycomb. So I'm just gonna kinda have it coming out the top on a corner, um, kinda like that. And I thought I could just use my staple gun and staple that to the back. Just an easy way to attach that. And I kind of had a dead space on my coffee bar that kind of needed something there anyway. And that B is going to be the perfect size to kind of fill up that area. Just kind of cleaning up some of the Mod Podge that had seeped on the back of that. And making sure my staples are stuck in there. I don't want that going anywhere. Okay, I thought this was really cute as is, but I thought, you know, it could be even cuter. Like I could use some letters and make it like a little sign. So there's three little honeycombs. So I thought that'd be perfect. We could spell out like the word B in the three different honeycomb shapes. So I'm just gonna use some of these wood letters from the Dollar Tree. These are great. You get like one of each letter in a package. And so I'm just gonna go through here and find the letters to make B. And it's just gonna be a quick, easy assigned DIY with these honeycombs. So B E E. And you could leave the natural wood. I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint mine though to kind of make it go with my color scheme. So I thought white would look nice and kind of contrast against that honeycomb. So just using a makeup sponge and some white acrylic, we're gonna simply paint these. Super easy. And then we can attach that to the fabric on our, the front of our little honeycombs. So sometimes with a project like this, you know, if it doesn't seem quite right, you can kind of keep adding things to it until it is perfect. And that's what I found with this one. So I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit of hot glue on the back of this letter. I don't want any extra like seeping out. And just kind of glue those to the center of each one of those little honeycomb cells. Super cute. I was a little worried about that white border that you kind of see around the honeycombs. It's cute, but it was bothering me. And so I am gonna go in and just touch it up a little bit just to make myself feel better. I don't really have any yellow that's quite that honey color, but I do have that bright yellow that I've been using today. And so I'm just gonna go in there with a tiny brush and just touch that up a little bit. And now I think it's perfect and ready to go. This is letting it look so cute on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar. Okay, next DIY, I found this actually at Dollar General, this little honeycomb candle holder. It was $3. I thought it was absolutely perfect for this. So even though it was $3, I did pick it up. And if you can't find that, they do have the cutest little honeycomb candles. This is a white one at the Dollar Tree. They also have a yellow one, so you could use something like that as well. And most of these projects today, except for the bigger signs, would be great for a B tier tray as well, including this cute little guy. So I'm just gonna put a Dollar Tree candle inside and easy peasy. Okay, I always like to do banners for my coffee bar and I have two shelves and I found this great craft fabric at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. There's like a honeycomb one, but there's also a really cute bee one. I've never um, picked up any of these before, but basically they're just long strips of fabric. And so I thought it'd be really cute to do like a little mini pennant banner with this since it's so skinny. And um, my shelves aren't very big. I think that will look really cute across it. So what I'm gonna do is just start cutting out like rectangle sized um, pieces of the material and I'm kind of avoiding the wrinkles in there just so I don't have to iron it. Um, and so that's why I'm cutting a new piece and then kind of using that piece as a template. And at first I thought five would be enough. I always like to do an odd number. Um, I do go back and add more because it wasn't quite enough because they're real tiny. Now I have them all stacked on top of each other, all five, and I'm just gonna cut halfway um, across the bottom up to the corner. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's gonna give me that little pennant banner shape. And as you can tell, they're gonna be real small, so a little mini pennant banner. And since I cut them all together, they're all pretty much the same size. 
And I already cut this twine down to size to make it the perfect size for my little coffee bar shelf. This would be really cute to do a little banner around a tear tray as well if you're doing a bee tear tray for spray. So I'm just gonna flip them all over and then we can just start attaching them. I like to do about halfway um, up the rope. That way I can just center it for my spacing. And since I'm just gonna hot glue these to the back, it's the easiest way. Um, I am gonna have to measure because they're not gonna be movable once I get them on there. And I decide to do like one inch in between each one just to kind of give myself some equal spacing. And the, like, just the jute twine is fine. It's just gonna kind of give it that rustic vibe. And the fabric was pretty good about not fraying. But if it does a little bit, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna kind of go with that rustic vibe. So we have all five pieces. I got these all glued on here and then I kind of took it to my coffee bar to see how it looked. And it looked like it needed a few more pieces. So I am gonna add a few more to it. Just trying to cut off any excess hot glue or anything like that, clean it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut two more of these. So I'm just gonna kinda use one of these for reference to cut down two more triangles for the pitted banner and then attach those along each side. I have enough room to do like one inch space between them all and then that looked really good. I'm gonna do like a different pennant banner for the top and the bottom, um, just for a little bit of variety on this coffee bar. But I always think this is the perfect final touch when I'm decorating my coffee bar for sure. And I DIY'd my coffee bar out of a $12 dresser that I got at Goodwill on clearance. And I do have a video on my channel about that, about how I turned just a tiny wall in my kitchen into a coffee bar. Um, if you're interested in doing the same, it was really fun. I didn't think I was gonna be able to work it in. It's like a wall that had a light switch and all different kinds of things in the way, but I made it work. Okay, the other banner, I thought I would use one of these little spinny yard stakes from the Dollar Tree, we could make little bees. I thought these would be the perfect for bees if I could just find a way to take them off here. I've never dismantled one of these before, so at first I thought maybe they don't come out, maybe they're wired all the way through, so I tried to use some like floral scissors to cut that wire, but no go on that, it's really thick. And then I realized that, hey, they do come out. And so I got one out here. I thought we could do like three bees and those are gonna make the perfect little bee bodies for me. Now be careful when you're pulling them out. My first two were successes and then I don't know what I was doing, but once the wire kind of came out of mine, there was really no going back, putting it in there. But cautionary tale, be careful when you're pulling them out. Luckily I only needed three because I screwed up three. <laughs> but the last one finally came off. I wanted the wire to stay in there to kind of give me a little structure for my bee. And I thought that would make a really cute bee body. It's almost the perfect shape and everything. And the black border is good. Now I needed something to make wings out of and I thought one of these little burlap bags from the Dollar Tree would be just perfect for that. It's gonna go with my, you know, brown vibe. I have brown in a lot of my objects today, like the faux wood and my wood shelves and like all the rope and everything. So I thought this would go nicely. So I just cut the front off my bag. This is like a, a synthetic burlap. So it kind of has like a glossy back. Um, I've been able to find these a lot in my Dollar Tree lately. Um, they're really nice to craft with because they're really easy to cut and they don't fray at all. So kind of do like a lopsided heart pattern just by drawing that out with my ink pen to represent a cute little wing for our little bee. And I think that looks really cute. Just a like kind of a lopsided little heart. So I'm gonna use that as reference. I'm gonna need like three right wings and three left wings. So just using that as a template, we can cut out more pieces. Now, when I wanna do the other side, I kinda of do glossy side to glossy side to kinda of give me a mirror image to cut out the other side. And then once I get that one cut out, then I can use that as a template to cut out two more. I didn't want like too big of a wing, 
but I wanted something kind of cute that we could kind of have them open and kind of go to the sides of the bee. And then I wanted something round and circular for the little honey um, bee head. And I thought those little wood discs from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. I've been able to find these a couple of my big Dollar Trees lately. Um, they have like the chips, they have these slices, and they also have like the twig sticks. They're so cute for crafting. If you see them, be sure to pick them up. But you can use whatever you have that's round. You could even use probably a wood bead. So I'm just going to hot glue the tips of my little wings to the top of my little bee. And then using hot glue on the wire in the top part of the bee, I'm going to glue down the cute little bee head. <laughs> just something kind of simple and abstract. I'm not going to do any antenna or anything like that. But I did want it to have like the bee body, wings, and a head. I think these turned out really cute. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the other two. Just gluing on both wings and a little bee head. And I'm working on a silicone mat. So that comes in handy when you're working with hot glue because it's not going to stick to it. So we have three bees. They're kind of bigger than the pennant banners, banners before. So I think there's going to be um, plenty to fill this up. So I'm just gonna flip them over and hot glue that twine that I cut down to size on the back of each one of those little wood slices. I am gonna get my tape measure out though because I wanna make sure that I have equal spacing between them. And this is gonna look really cute. I'm gonna do this one on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar, kind of overlapping my coffee cups that are hanging below it. And I just attach those with a little dot of hot glue on each side of my coffee bar shelves. I find that to be the easiest way to hang like a little lightweight pennant banner without too much damage. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about memberships. I've just introduced them on my channel. It's $4.99 a month if you would like to support Crafty Beach. You're going to get early access to my new videos, including this one, and Fun loyalty badges next to your name when you comment and your own set of custom emojis and member shout out. So we already have a member, Karen O'Haran. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for becoming a crafty beach bum. And I would also like to thank some of my financial supporters for giving me super thanks, super chats, donating to uh, buy me a coffee and even my cash app. You guys are the best and you help keep this channel going. We just hit 13,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. Trying to get to 15,000 and I know we can do it guys. So if you haven't subscribed, I would encourage you to. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment your favorite DIY or find below and don't forget to subscribe.
Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like more Crafty Beach YouTube things that you might enjoy this video right here.